Hey guys, Everyman Tech here. So we now got the Mac Mini M1 on the deck and we you know we've been using it and I know I've been using it for quite some time for the past couple of months and I have to say that it's been a pretty good machine. You know, it does everything I need to do and as far as any of the other Apple products on the market, it's definitely fairly priced and it's just been a blast. Um, not having no, had no hiccups as of yet, but as of right now, it's been pretty good. So. That question remains is, is this actually the best desktop for the typical user today? And after this video, after we just talk about a couple of things, I think we should be able to at least answer that question, or at least get the best answer possible. So without further ado, let's get into it. So before we get into all the intricate stuff about the Mac One and the Mac Mini M1, let's just talk about the overall design of how it looks. So when you take it out of the box, you see this big, not so many square design machine in your hands. And the size is rel relatively the same size as the previous Intel models. But the only, the, one of the main things that you will actually notice on this machine versus the other one is the fact that unlike that space gray option along with the silver, this Mac is M1 version only comes right now in silver. And maybe that was going to, maybe that will change as we get into the event coming up, whenever that is, whenever they release the event date, and maybe we might see a space gray or maybe even the pro version of the Mac Mini M1. Who knows? Maybe M2. But anywho, I'm not into the rumors. But yeah. So right now, as you see, you only get silver, and along and in addition to the silver, you also can see that it has that nice matte aluminum design, which is relatively the same as the previous Intel versions. And you will also notice that the weight is pretty sturdy and is not too heavy. And as you go, oh, you know, it won't be holding it anyway. So it'll oh, most likely be on your desk or anything like that. But just taking it out of the box, it has a really good feel to it. And for a machine of its size, it definitely has some strength to it. And so you definitely have that confidence that it's definitely built with some really good quality in mind. Now, outside of that, it does come with some ports. And those ports are as follows. Now, your options are, of course, your regular Ethernet. You have two USB-A ports, two H and one HDMI, and two Thunderbolts, two Thunderbolt ports. And those Thunderbolts, Thunderbolt ports, of course, are we use for your displays, Thunderbolt displays, and things of that nature. And of course, you have a bonus 3.5 millimeter jack. I say that's a bonus because, as you know, with a lot of your iOS devices or your iPhones, etc., they're going away with that 3.5 millimeter jack. Well, they have went away with it. So it was nice to see that this Mac, this M1 Mac Mini, actually still has a 3.5 millimeter jack as some people still use headphones that require the jack. I mean, I do. And of course, if you got those computer speakers, a lot of those still utilize the 3.5 millimeter jack. So why not all devices have it? But that's a whole different conversation, but you do get that in the M1 Mac Mini, so that's definitely a plus if you don't think so already. So when we talk about the Mac Mini and as its one desktop unit, we first gotta start with, of course, the M1 chip within itself. Now this one, this M1 chip has revolutionized everything that Apple is stand for in years to come and going forward. And it's definitely laid the groundwork of what their products are going to feature coming, going along the way. Now, when we want to start out with the Apple M1 chip, now this M1 chip is broken up into two parts as an eight core CPU. Now, four cores represent a power efficiency and the other four cores represent performance. And this architecture was definitely smart in the fact that now this thing can push out way more power than the Intel graphic chips previously did. On top of that, it definitely also saves way more battery life. And without, in addition to those four, um, eight, eight core CPU, you also have your eight core GPU which pushes way more graphical power than any Intel graphics chip or any graphics card in previous models. And so in all in total with the eight core CPU and eight core GPU, this will make up the whole 16 core 
and one chip within itself as a whole neural engine. Now, in addition to that good, awesome 16 course neural engine and one chip, this machine is definitely great for powering multiple displays. Now, if you hook it up two displays at a time using the Mac Mini M1, you will actually be able to push 4K and 6K dual displays at the same time at 60 Hertz. Anything else will be pushing it to the limit, but it can comfortably and efficiently push 60 Hertz on two, on two 4K or 6K displays. In addition to those displays, it also includes that HDMI port, which I talked about in the beginning. So you can actually hook up three displays, meaning you will have three great awesome displays to do whatever you need to do. And you can use HDMI and the 4K, you know, every kind of cable and anything like that. So you'll definitely be able to get the best graphics and get the best interface possible as far as graphics and your whole overall display is concerned. Now, buying you, so there's a quick note that you better make sure that you have all the right cables with it. Because even though you got the two Thunderbolt, you got the HDMI port, you definitely want to make sure that you have your, all your cables and the correct cables or converters and different that and also make sure you have the right monitors with those right um cables you know you get kind of crazy but yeah just pretty much overall just make sure that when you're hooking it up to your mac um mini make sure that you have the right cable the um, ports on your monitor as well as the cables going right into the mac mini within itself and it's also great the, for a quick fact that since this machine can push those 4K and 6K displays, which is definitely a bonus in today's market because as we all know, a lot of the different manufacturers that are making monitors now are definitely pushing out more 4K uh, quality monitors, even all, some all the way up to 8K. And without, you know, you're going away, that's saying that 1080p full HD monitors are not still available, which they are, and they're still good. But just the fact that you can definitely future proof your display in your whole office setup with 4k even up to 8k displays which some might require that depending on if you're you know graphical work or you're doing different types of movie editing and things like that you really want to get that up quality so just because so this is great that this kind of, that you will have the confidence to know that you can pick up the m1 mac mini today even at its base value of the base version base backed out and everything like that and you still be able to get those 4k 6k monitors dual monitors mind you and possibly even three and still be able to enjoy the same high quality and without losing any core performance within the cpu itself and another great feature i know i was talking about it before but i'm gonna say it again is that 3.5 millimeter jack yes i i can't beat it enough that this 3.5 millimeter jack is still one of the smallest features of the mac mini but it's still one of the best and and it's just i'm just glad to see that even as apple is still going up to the m1 product lineup and going away from a lot of the old stuff that the intel models um had but they still and still decided to incorporate the 3.5 millimeter jack even though they just did away with it on their um ios devices like their phones and things like that it's great to see that they still it values the quality of that 3.5 millimeter jack because even though I have a lot of wireless headphones I use on a daily basis, it's good that sometimes when those I'm charging those that I can still revert back to some backup wired headphones that I still have and still be confident and know that I can still connect those right into the Mac Mini and still listen to my music or just listening to my edits while I'm doing editing things like that nature or some Zoom meetings and still be able to still hear that good quality with some headphones because it's just just a good feature and I'm sure you guys are gonna relate to the fact that that 3.5 millimeter jack is still widely used even as things are progressing in the tech world these days but yes and also again i have to keep beating the bush about that um computer system setup that that 3.5 millimeter jack is still important for setting those up so i'm glad thank you apple for keeping that 3.5 millimeter jack as a core feature within uh, the architecture of the mac mini and all the other m1 mac devices and yeah it's just an awesome feature so the 3.5 millimeter jack definitely is i know Intel models and Intel Windows and PCs and all that just the desktop still have that. But I'm just glad from an Apple standpoint that even though they're upgrading with the new M1 series devices going up to the M2 potentially, 
um, devices that they were able to still keep that basic 3.5 millimeter jack that we love so much. So that's another great feature why this is still one of, like, one of Apple's best desktop and maybe even the best desktop PC so far going forward. Now the base price of these models go for $699 and $899, where your $699 base price will be for the 256 gig storage model and the $899 will go towards that 512 gigabyte storage price range. So arguably they're the best price for well specced out um, desktop computer I might be talking about Windows or Apple that you can possibly get on the market. So that's definitely why I say it's the best desktop on the market as of right now. And why I, I can make that argument and our Apple can make that argument just for the base price of that, for this price range of just getting that 256 gig or that 800 and 512 gigabytes of storage, which is well way more than enough just to get the average user going. And even you, some super users out there who do a lot of programming or editing, that that storage amount can definitely, you know, be just, just good enough so to get you going. And again, that's what also with those both units, those are both with eight gigabytes, eight gigabytes of RAM storage of memory. So that way, you know, eight gigs is pretty much the standard for any PC, Windows or Mac. So you will definitely can get some good tasking stuff done. Now, if you're someone who does like a lot of heavy apps and you definitely wanna have that more fluidness as far as changing from app to app and program to program, then it's just good to know that you can both spec both of these up to 16 gigabytes of storage. And again, that price is gonna go up, but arguably it's still cheaper than a lot of the highly spec'd out Windows machines that you can get on the market and definitely cheaper than the Intel pre models that previously were out before the M1 was even brought on board. So $699 for 256 gigabytes of storage and eight gigabytes of RAM and $899 if you wanna go with that 512 gigabytes of storage and eight ninety and eight gigabytes of RAM. And also just remember that you can suspect either option. You can go up to a 16 gigabytes of RAM if you want to configure it up to that. Of course, that's going to be additional funds, but it arguably it still is that great price point of being really affordable. So you have that in mind. And also, if you really want to change the in Mac Mini um, as far as the storage is concerned, you have options there as well. So for the 699 model, you can spec, you can configure it to 512 gigabytes of storage if you choose, one terabyte or even two terabytes of storage. And for the 899 model, you can only spec it out to one terabyte or two terabyte, arguably because at 899, you're already going to be getting the 512 gigabytes as a minimum anyway. So. Again, that one terabyte, two terabyte is awesome. And if you really need more storage than that, you can easily go out and buy an external hard drive where you can get as much as one terabyte, um, four terabytes, eight terabytes, 10 terabytes, so on and so forth. You can go as high as you want if you're willing to pay the money for it. So you definitely have, just for that base unit price, you can definitely have a highly specced out machine that can do way more than any other highly specced out machine that you get from Windows or even some of the Intel models for way less money. So why not? You can definitely make the argument that this is just a no brainer. And taking it from me, from someone who using it on a daily basis, I can t arguably say that this was definitely a better value than even buying the most specced out, most expensive Windows desktop that you can possibly get on the market. So, after going through all of those features and just going through that video, if you still have any doubt in your mind whether this is the best desktop to buy right now in 2020 and even now in the 2021, as of right now, yes, I can arguably say that this is the best desktop that you can possibly buy. As if you're a Windows fan or Apple fan, just for these, what you get in terms of specs, what you get in terms of price, and just what you get for overall quality and build, this is the best that you can possibly get. I mean, this thing, it does everything that you need to do. You can, you can get all the storage, you can configure it now. You can configure it again. That's the biggest thing. 
Now you can't configure, you can't take it apart and add your own memory and storage like you could do it in previous models or even with like, you know, just as you still do with Windows machines, that's the only knack about it, that like you can't do that. So you, when you buy it out of the factory or buy from the store, you have to make sure you're buying, you spec it out right there and there. But again, that's the beauty of it, is the fact that you can future-proof deal with this machine. You can buy it mostly spec up all, all day or every day to what you want, or you can just buy the base model and it's still gonna last you for ye years and years to come. And again, so it's just a no brainer. So even so for, it seems fits every budget that's out there. And again, with that option to configure it to the way you want it, it definitely makes it a contender, or at least in my opinion, the best Apple device or desktop, or even the best overall desktop period from price or standpoint and quality that you can possibly buy on the market. So you got that. So, all right, guys, that's the end of the video. I want to thank you guys for watching it and taking some notes and getting some information about why this desktop or this Mac Mini can be your best desktop option out there for 2021. As again, just the options and the configurability and just everything else as far as overall quality and price is just spot on. And for this climate and what's going on right now, that this definitely something to definitely consider if you're looking at upgrading your current desktop or just buying a new M1 product, period. So again, everything else, if you have any questions, definitely leave those in the comments so I can definitely get those answers to you, which I will always love, again, help you guys out any way I can. And also anything that I spoke to or that you've seen on this video, I'll definitely make sure I'll have the links to those down in the descriptions below for your purchasing needs. And again, definitely like if you like this video and comment and definitely subscribe so you can get more, get notified of new videos like this one and like the other ones pretty on my channels, any other reviews or anything coming up like in, of that nature. So again, I wanna thank you for taking the time out to looking at my video and definitely I hope you get some value out of it. So leave in the comment section too, um, if, just let me know if you picked up a Mac mini and if you haven't, are you considering it and, or you know, just, just let me know like why you would consider or why what you think about it. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So again, this is Darren with Everyman Tech. I hope you guys have a great and safe day. Bye.